talking to uh, Ron yesterday about some of Kyle's deep balls, and Ron says he's trying to just be a little bit too perfect versus just airing it out, letting those fast guys run underneath it. What do you see? What do you tell Kyle in those? I think uh, Coach uh, probably has a pretty accurate feel of it. Uh, a lot of it ends up being technique, footwork, uh, understanding who you have and what you have to do with it. But uh, he's a good deep ball thrower. That's one of the things that when he played his first game against New Orleans, and we just have to keep working on it and get better at it. Can you go back to, I guess, Atlanta when he got thrown in there for a second, and then the New Orleans game, what you saw in those two games that, that struck you the most? Well, I don't know that you see anything in a specific game, but but Kyle uh, impressed us when he came back, and it's, it's the way he, his demeanor and the way he plays, and then, uh, you know he doesn't he doesn't change he doesn't get all hyped up uh, when he gets in there and gets a chance to play and obviously the New Orleans game is a, is a much better feel than uh, the snaps he had in the Atlanta game and uh, he obviously looked very comfortable playing. What about uh, not just young players but any players they kind of start to stack the years up in the NFL. Um, what do they have to learn about how to process and manifest criticism? Oh boy, uh, that's a good one. That's, I don't know if we have enough time for that. I, I think you just got to understand that uh, the people who are evaluating you, uh, you know, within the organization are the people that matter. And, uh, you know, I think these guys have all played enough and have played in situations and, and the, you know, their preparation to come to the NFL that they have a pretty good understanding of it. But, uh, you know, you just can't get caught up in it. You gotta, you gotta understand uh, who's evaluating you, and you gotta do the things you're being coached to do. And you can't worry about the outside. North, uh, what is DJ Moore doing particularly well right now? Well, I think he's he's grown a great deal throughout the last year and a half. Uh, he's playing a lot faster, and he's playing faster more consistently. Uh, and I think that comes with understanding, you know, and we always say you play faster, but if you're thinking uh, and you're trying to figure things out, sometimes it slows you down. He's uh, attacking uh, defenders, he's attacking coverages, uh, and as you see it when you watch him, he's just a lot more aggressive, and, and I think that's confidence. And then I do believe that when you start getting more opportunities, you know, you, you grow in confidence too. Who from your staff is might go to Atlanta to, to watch the Kaepernick tryout? And I what told you, you might ask that. I, I don't. <laughs> no one, no one has said anything to me about it. No, I know I'm not going. And uh, if someone's going, I, I it's not any of my business. Um, obviously, we're getting ready for the Falcons. Is there, North, is there something that Greg Olson does that maybe obviously we know about his receiving, his leadership? Is there something that he does that makes him that much? kind of elevates him into that elite category of tight end? Yeah, it's, he's, he's like the best players I've been around uh, throughout my time coaching. And, and you, you can see it in guys. He's a great competitor. Uh, he doesn't want to lose. He, he doesn't want to lose uh, a, a, a battle with a defender. Uh, he's going to do whatever he has to do to be successful. And, uh, you know, he thrives on getting the ball, and he thrives on uh, – he wants to be the guy, and, and the best players have that quality. Is there anything you take away from that final drive that Kyle had that you know you saw as a positive or a negative? I know it didn't end the way you wanted it to, but was there anything you took away from that? Well, I always tell the guys, uh, unfortunately, you're going to be in those situations, but if we handle our business uh, throughout the first part of the game, we're not in that situation. Uh, obviously, uh, we let some opportunities slip away early. Uh, then it comes back to bite you. But the fact that we ran 18 plays in two minutes and 40 seconds or whatever, I don't think I've ever been around that. Uh, and I think that when the guys looked at the tape, they saw we had plenty of opportunities uh, to get an opportunity to go for two. Uh, we didn't get it done. But I think every time you're in that situation, everyone grows from it. And, uh, you know, the next time you're in it, uh, you'll have a chance to be successful. Have you seen, <clears throat> excuse me, have you seen uh, players in the past, and you obviously don't have to name names, but um, who who do get caught up in criticism, and you have to 
kind of sit them down and, and talk to them about kind of cutting through all of that and how to handle that type of thing, or is that usually a, a locker room thing? No, I think I think uh, it's part of coaching, and I think you can see young players who get caught up in it. Uh, you see guys that are, if they're struggling, uh, you know, with the football or struggling with other things in their lives, uh, it can affect them more, and that's a big part of coaching. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, you're aware of it, and sometimes you aren't. Uh, but if it's something that's affecting the performance, obviously you have to deal with it. North Atlanta obviously caught the league's attention with what they did down in New Orleans uh, to that Saints offense. Def defensively, what impressed you about you know what you saw on the tape as you're preparing for these guys? Uh, obviously, it starts with their pass rush, and their their pass rush was very aggressive uh, against New Orleans. They did a lot with a four-man rush, which allows them to cover. Uh, they played with high intensity. Uh, and they were, you know, they looked like they uh, were on a mission, and they played that way. So, you know, that's uh, obviously the type of effort we expect to get. North, uh, Ron talked about how he felt really good about the two-point conversion play that you had kind of waiting to, to take that chance if you had scored the touchdown. Is it hard to, to hold back a play specifically for, like, if you need it in a late-game situation? Or when do, when do you decide, like, now's the time I'm going to deploy it? Well, I don't know you hold back a play, but you, in, this, in this day and age uh, where uh, it seems that more and more people are going to go for two and, and you're getting put, put in situations, you have, you have to have multiple plays ready. And, and uh, obviously what's happening on the other side where defenses used to have one or two ways they're going to handle a two-point play, you're seeing teams defensively putting a lot more time into it and giving you a lot more multiple looks. So, um, you know, you, you feel good about the plays that you list and you have up where you wouldn't put them up, uh, you know, so a, a lot of it obviously hinges on the matchups and what they play and how you play it. And those are just for when you're at the two, when you're inside the two or a two point conversion? Well, or any you time. have, you have, the guys used to laugh at me because uh, the list gets long of things you're going to have inside the five, inside the two, two point plays, those type of things. Uh, but you get in a game like we were and you're down in there and you have multiple situations, you, you better have uh, enough ammo to go try to make the play.